Good evening. We'd like to call the Durham City Council meeting to order at 7.01 p.m. on Monday, October the 19th, and certainly want to welcome all of you that are in attendance. If we just take a moment of silent meditation, please. Thank you. Ask Councilman Brown if he would lead us in the pledge. All right. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Madam Clerk, if you call the roll, please. Mayor Bell, Present. Mayor Pro Tem Cole McFadden, Present. Council Member Brown, Here. Council Member Katati, Council Member Davis, Here. Council Member Moffitt, Here. and Council Member Shule. Good evening. We have two proclamations that we'd like to present this evening. The first one is for National Lead Poisoning Prevention Week proclamation. Uh, I'd like to ask Ms. Lenora Smith, the program director, is Lenora here? Okay. And partnership of effort for the advancement of children's health, better known as Peach. Oh, come on up and join us. Thank you. Doing well. How are you doing? Uh, the proclamation reads: Whereas common renovation and repair activities, including sanding, cutting, drilling and other renovation and demolition activities can create lead-bearing dust and chips by disturbing lead-based paint, where such lead-based dust and chips can be hazardous to human health, especially that of children, whereas the Center for D Disease Control indicates that lead poisoning is considered the most preventable environmental disease among young children, yet approximately half a million young children have blood lead levels that fall into a dangerous category. Whereas the United States Environmental Protection Agency issued the Renovation, Repair, and Painting Rule on April 22, 2008, which established training and certification requirements for contractors, maintenance workers, and property owners related to renovation, repair, and painting projects in pre-1978 housing and child-occupied facilities, whereas training and in compliance with these EPA rules will help to protect human health, <coughs> especially the children of Durham, whereas training and certification is available through a number of accredited providers within the Durham and Triangle vicinity, whereas information about local opportunities to obtain training and certification to satisfy the EPA rules is available at the Lead-Based Paint Management Pro Program at the North Carolina Health Hazards Control website. Now, therefore, I, William B. Bill Bell, Mayor of the City of Durham, North Carolina, do hereby proclaim October 19th through 25th of 2015 as National Lead Poison Prevention Week in Durham, and hereby urge all the citizens to take special note of this observance by acknowledging the hazards of lead paint. And with this my hand, it's Corpus Hill, the city of Durham, North Carolina. This is the 19th day of October, 2015. And I'm going to present this to Ms. Smith for any comments, and she can introduce the others that are here. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Bell. Um, I'd like to recognize two of our board members, Ms. Effie Steele and Mr. Barrington Ross, who are standing with me. Also would like to give recognition to Mr. Eddie Davis and um, Mayor Pro Tem Cora Cole McFadden for assistance with um, developing a resolution um, for this event. And we've done that um, in relation to the Mayor's Poverty Reduction Initiative. Um, during a survey that was done for the, ha oh, and I'm sorry, uh, Patrick Baker is also, the city attorney is also a member of our board and I, he almost got away with it, <laughs> <laughs> trying to hide. But we're doing this as a part of the Mayor's Poverty Reduction Initiative. During a survey that was done of residents in that area, um, a majority of the uh, residents live in older housing. About 70% of the um, residents said that they need repairs on the interior and exterior of the property. And according to the RRP rule, the Renovate, Repair, and Paint rule, 
if um, a contractor disturbs six square feet in any one room, disturb six square feet of paint in any one room, they are required by law to use the RRP work practices. And um, PEACH, the Partnership Effort for the Advancement of Children's Health, um, is a program that was born out of Northeast Central Durham where the uh, Mayor's Poverty Reduction Initiative is targeting. And our program teaches this class we want to make sure that as some of the repairs are done, we want to spotlight and target and make sure that contractors within Durham are using lead safe work practices when they do any type of repairs that disturb paint on older housing um, throughout the city, but right now specifically in Northeast Central Durham. So thank you. Next proclamation speaks to Conflict Resolution Day, and I would ask Raquel Dominique, and who's the mediation manager for the L.B. Swalling and Conflict Resolution Center, and board members uh, Bonnie Ashley and Barbara Thomas, if you would join me. Whereas the need for people to work to resolve conflict without violence is an important factor in our community, whereas community mediation offers constructive processes for resolving differences and conflicts between individuals, groups, and organizations, whereas community mediation is an alternative to avoid destructive confrontation and prolonged litigation or violence, whereas Elna B. Spalding Conflict Resolution Center, through its unique approach to community mediation, has trained and supervised ordinary citizens to serve as mediators, to give of their time and effort to help others resolve conflicts, whereas it is in the best interest of our community to support community mediation and its approach to conflict resolution, whereas the Eleanor B. Spaulding Conflict Resolution Center has a long history of successfully mediating family, youth, truancy, misdemeanor, and organizational disputes, whereas district court judges have embraced mediation as a practical alternative to trials and mediation and misdemeanor cases for citizens issued complaints. Now, therefore, I, William V. Bill Bell, Mayor of the City of Durham, North Carolina, do hereby proclaim October 15th, 2015, as Conflict Resolution Day. Now, I said October 15th, we know this is October 19th, but we accept that. As Conflict Resolution Day in Durham, and hereby urge all citizens to recognize Elna B. Spaulding Conflict Resolution Center as a valuable and accessible resource for the citizens of Durham. And witness my hand in Corporate Seal of the City of Durham, North Carolina, this 19th day of October 2015. And I'm going to present this to you and for any comments that you might have. And I really wish we could reach a lot more people and have them resolve their conflicts in other ways. <laughs> well, thank you. And on behalf of Grace Marsh, our executive director, and uh, the El Navier Spaulding Conflict Resolution Center, um, and our members of the um, Board of Directors, uh, Bonnie Ashley and uh, Barbara Thomas. Uh, we thank you for this um, recognition and we assure you that um, this is, a, we will continue with uh, our commitment to promote mediation and any other uh, type of conflict resolution. Um, our commitment goes to uh, families in Durham uh, schools where we are uh, now we are going with doing uh, peer mediation trainings and um, and actually we just have um, eight schools uh, that just line up for uh, trainings we go to different schools with truancy court where um, we try to prevent um, delinquency by um, attending um, just paying attention to um, to students who are missing schools and creating a collaboration between uh, the schools and the parents. Um, so with this, we are uh, just assuring you that we are committed to the continue that work in the Durham community. Thank you.
Do we have any comments by members of the council on any item? Recognize Councilman Davis. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I just want to um, let the citizens of Durham know that we had a group of young people who came into Durham, North Carolina last weekend from the University of Tennessee. Uh, they were on fall break and they did several things. They did uh, some um, volunteering at a um, local food bank and they spent several hours helping to clear brush and uh, old leaves and, um, and, and limbs from the Gear Cemetery. Um, and they spent a lot of time volunteering. Uh, <laughs> and it's uh, sort of a corny joke since they're from the University of Tennessee. Uh, <laughs> uh, but they were here in town and they did a good job and we were able to talk to them about the history of Gear Cemetery and to mention to them about the upcoming work that the Gear Cemetery, Friends of the Gear Cemetery, as well as other um, groups in Durham will be putting forth to honor the uh, 150th anniversary of the 13th Amendment that will be coming up in December. Thank you. Okay. Any other comments? Recognize the Mayor Pro Tem. Thank you and good evening. I would just like to thank the city manager for his assistance. Uh, last week we had a meeting of officials from Lakeview School and they were sharing the needs of those students and the manager, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, is very cooperative in our trying to help redirect the lives of those kids. So I want to thank you, Mr. Bonfield, for that. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? If not, we look to the city manager for any priority items. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mayor. Uh, good evening, everyone. I have two uh, priority items this evening, which are supplemental items, agenda item number 26. Preliminary Economic Development Incentive Agreement between the City of Durham and a proposed project Cavalier within the Community Redevelopment Area within the City Limits. And Agenda Item Number 27, Preliminary Economic Development Incentive Agreement between the City of Durham and a proposed project Iron Man within the Community Redevelopment Area of the City Limits. That's all. Thank you. Motion on the City Manager's prior to the item. Second. It's been properly moved and second. Madam Clerk, will you open the vote and close the vote? It passes seven to zero. I uh, recognize the city attorney for any priority items. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. No priority items. Likewise, the city clerk. No items, Mr. Mayor. Uh, we're moved with the agenda as printed, and the consent agenda items are items that can pass with a single motion. If a council member or someone from the public uh, chooses to remove an item, we discuss that later in the meeting. Uh, item one on the consent agenda is the mayor's nominee for appointment to the House and Appeals Board. <coughs> Item two is Workforce Development Board appointment. Item three is the Durham Housing Authority Board of Commissioners reappointments. Item four is request to carry over funds from 2000, fiscal year 2014-15 to fiscal year 2015-16, budget and other budget, grant and capital project ordinances. Item five is an ordinance to revise the temporary street closing procedures for special events. Item six is a contract award to L-J Inc. for a contract SR-62 easement maintenance tree removal. Item seven is contract with Fountain Works LLC to provide professional services in support of the Jordan Lake Partnership. Item eight is a resolution authorizing city auction. Item nine is auctioneering services. Item 10 is proposed advanced acquisition for the future expansion of Lake Mickey property of James Franklin Roberts and others. Item 11 is proposed acquisition of the former Duke Diet and Fitness Center property located at 808 West Trinity Avenue. I'm going to pull that item. We have persons that want to speak on that item. <coughs> item 12 is lease of non-residential property and contract for service with Achievement Academy of Durham. Item 13 is a resolution authorizing the city manager and delegates to ex execute encroachment agreements with North Carolina Department of Transportation and Railroad, Railroad Companies. Item 15 is report on child sex trafficking in Durham. Items 16 through 19 are items that can be found on the general business agenda as public hearings. Item 25 is a resolution in support of resettlement of Syrian refugees, refugees in, in Durham. 
Uh, that concludes the consent agenda. Entertain a motion with approval of the consent agenda with the exception of item 11. So second. We're properly move and second. Madam Clerk, we open the vote. We close the vote. It passes 7 to 0. Uh, we'll move to the general business agenda, public hearings. Item 16 is conference plan amendment, Garrett Ridge Multifamily Phase 3, A15 0006. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of Council. Pat Young with the Planning Department. Uh, I can first certify for the record that the public hearing items before you tonight have been advertised in accordance with the requirements of law and their affidavits to that effect on file with the planning department. Uh, as the mayor indicated, the case before you is A15-00006. It's a request to change the future land use map designation of 12.5 acres of property at 4806 and 5010 Garrett Road from their, uh, its current designation of medium density residential to medium high density residential and if approved, um, this would allow consistency with the companion zoning map uh, change case, which is the next case in your agenda, which would uh, then in turn allow for development of apartments at a density of 15 units per acre. Uh, based on conditions warranting an amendment to the future land use map, uh, pursuant to our review of the four criteria for plan amendments identified in the UDO, staff recommends approval of this item. Uh, at their meeting of August 11th, 2015, the Planning Commission recommended approval by a vote of 14 to 0. Uh, I'll be happy to take any questions. Thank you. This is a public hearing. The public hearing is open. First, I ask other questions by members of the council of the staff. If not, is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak on this item, this being a public hearing? Please you state your name. And Ron Horvath, uh, Horvath Associates. I'm here to answer questions on this matter uh, with the zoning that comes up. Excuse me. Zoning that comes up, I'll have a few more comments to make. Thank you. You're welcome. Is there anyone else that wants to speak on this item, either for or against? Uh, let the record reflect that no one else asked to speak. I will declare the public hearing to be closed. Matters back before the council. <coughs> it's been properly moved and second. Madam Clerk, we open the vote. We close the vote. It passes 7 to 0. Item 17 is a zoning map change for Garrett Rue. Garrett Ridge Multifamily Phase 3 Z15 0013. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Members of Council, Pat Young again with the Planning Department. Uh, this case is the companion to the previous uh, Comprehensive Plan Amendment case you just approved, Z15 0013. Uh, it's a request to change the zoning map designation of 13.04 acres of property located at 4806 and 5010 Garrett Road from its current designation of residential suburban or RS20 and residential suburban multifamily to, uh, with a development plan to residential suburban multifamily with a development plan. And if approved, this would allow for 36 additional uh, apartment units uh, to be added to the existing uh, 137 units at the site for a total of 173 units. Uh, the development plan associated with this request does include a number of commitments above the UDO minimum standards. Um, many of these were incorporated into the previous zoning cases associated with this property in 2001, 2006, and earlier this year, and this includes provision of a mulch trail, vegetative berm with plantings, dedication of a bus shelter, and site entrance improvements. A complete list of the commitments are included with the staff report associated with this item. Uh, staff determines this request is consistent with the comprehensive plan and other adopted policies and ordinances, and uh, by a vote of 14 to 0, the Planning Commission recommended approval of this item at their August 11th meeting. I'll be happy to take any questions. Again, this is a public hearing, and the public hearing is open. We we'll ask first other questions by members of the council or the staff report. I recognize Councilwoman Katati. Thank you. <coughs> Excuse me. Thank you, Mayor. Um, this could be a question for either staff or the applicant, but um, I live close by and have already been in one lane of traffic along Garrett Road, and so I'm curious about the sequencing, given that there is so much land disturbance and activity out there now. In other words, um, what's currently allowed and how is that changing with this um, rezoning? So in, in terms of, uh, there, there's no committed phasing of the improvements, but if approved, this would allow an additional 36 units at the site. So uh, the, what's out there now is essentially what's approved uh, up to 137 units. Uh, Mr. Horvath may want to speak to the developer's plans. Part of what you're dealing with, on oh, sorry, Ron Horvath, Horvath Associates, thank you. Mayor, members of council, good to see you this evening. Part of the construction you see out there is the widening of Garrett Road. We're actually going to tie in and complete the road section all the way down past the existing church. 
Uh, that is in front of phase three. Phase three will not have a driveway access. So once that construction of the road widening is done, that should be it for uh, single lane traffic. The rest of it will take place on site. Are there other questions by members of the council? I recognize councilors. Sure. Uh, Mr. Horvath, uh, we often have developers in this situation who uh, proffer $500 per student to the Durham Public Schools uh, for the additional students that are being added. And I see you all are adding seven students here, and I was wondering if you all had considered such a proffer. Uh, yes, sir. I have talked to my client, and they have no problem with the proffering that with site plan approval, prior to site plan approval being uh, awarded, we will make a payment of $3,500, a voluntary payment, $3,500 to the uh, Durham school system. Other questions? Again, is there anyone else that wants to speak on this item? I'd uh, like to reflect that no one else asked to speak. I'll uh, declare the public hearing to be closed. Madam Speaker, report to council. Move it. Proper move and second. Madam Clerk, will you open the vote? Close the vote. It passes seven as well. Pass. Councilman Shule. It's been properly moved and second. Madam Clerk, will you open the vote? You close the vote. It passes seven to zero. Thank you. you recognize Councilman Shul. Mr. Mayor, I'm sorry. I, I realize that when the uh, consent agenda passed it, I did want to see if there was anyone here from uh, either uh, Adam Clark of World Relief Durham or Ellen Andrews of Church World Service, and I meant to do that earlier. They are the people that uh, are helping to resettle uh, refugees in Durham. They've resettled several hundred refugees uh, in the past few years uh, from war-torn areas, Afghanistan and Iraq and other places. And they, they are the ones that would like to be helpful in resettling the Syrian refugees. And I apologize for not recognizing them earlier, but if you wouldn't mind, Mr. Mayor, maybe they could stand up and be recognized. And I apologize for not doing that earlier, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. That's quite all right. Thank you. Move to item 18, consolidated annexation 4512 Denfield Street, BDG 15-0007. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Members of Council, Pat Young again with the Planning Department. Uh, this is the consolidated uh, initial zoning, utility extension agreement, and voluntary annexation item associated uh, with 4512 Denfield Street, which is a 2.15 acre parcel uh, owned by True Covenant Missionary Baptist Church. And if this request is approved, the applicant intends to construct a place of worship at this uh, location. Staff recommends an initial zoning of industrial light or IL, uh, which is in the Falls Jordan B FJB uh, watershed overlay. Uh, this designation is consistent with the future land use map designation for the property, which is industrial, and the existing county zoning at this location. Uh, and if approved, would allow for construction of the desired place of worship following required uh, administrative approvals. Uh, the Public Works and Water Management Department uh, reviewed uh, the utility impact analysis for utility and the utility extension agreement uh, at this site and have determined that there is existing capacity uh, in both ter terms of water and sanitary sewer uh, for this proposed development and budget management services re uh, provided the required fiscal impact analysis for this item. Uh, and they did determine that the proposed annexation would ultimately be revenue negative, which is common for tax exempt uses such as places of worship. Uh, based on the information in the staff report, uh, staff recommends approval, and I'll be happy to take any questions. Thank you. This is a public hearing. The public hearing is open. When asked first, other questions by members of the council? Recognize Councilman Shule. I know I asked this last two weeks ago uh, on another item, but is the, just, just explain to me one more time, the the Planning Commission resolution occurs whenever there is a, ex a translation, is that correct? That's exactly the, right. Council okay. Mitchell wants a, a direct translation from county zoning, which is the case here. Okay. That's what I thought. I just want to make sure, and I, I will not ask it in another <laughs> two weeks, I promise. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions by members of the council? If not, uh, I have one, two, three, four, I have five persons that are signed up to speak on this item. Uh, let me ask, is there anyone else that wants to speak on this item other than the five that I have called? Uh, 
that being the case, I'm going to call each by your name, if you can come to the podium to the right. And you actually have two minutes. All of these are proponents for the project. I, I don't know, is anyone that is opposed to the project that wants to speak in the audience? If not, I uh, recognize Pauline Obens. I know I screwed that up, but you'll correct it. <laughs> Diane King, Dr. Johnny Leak, Sonia McKenzie, and Sam Mevin. If you come to the right. Hello, my name is Diane King. Um, good evening, Mayor Bell and council members. I'd like to thank you for the opportunity to uh, speak in favor of the opposed um, annexation of the Denfield property. Um, in this regard, True Covenant Baptist Church plans to complement and to enhance contigu contiguous properties. On the right, traveling north, there is a residence which was constructed in 1957, according to the Durham County records. This property has been well kept. On the left, traveling south, the property is currently owned and operated by a Triangle Auto. This property was formerly owned by Jake Sales Salvage. Uh, we at True Covenant Baptist Church plan to enhance the property by erecting a house of worship which complements yet provides aesthetic appeal to Denfield Street and surrounding areas. Placing certain shrubberies and other plants that not only add beauty but also have better water erosion potential. Furthermore, we are convinced that the services and infrastructure of the city of Durham are adequate to serve the proposed annexation property. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Hello, Honorable Mayor, Council. My name is Sonia McKenzie, and I do thank you all for listening to our request, and we thank you very much for your support. You're welcome. Dr. Lee. Indeed. All right. Had to adjust this thing. Okay, we the members of the True Covenant Baptist Church, as was previously mentioned, wish to erect a house of worship. We are already doing some things where we currently exist to help reduce some of the negative social outcomes that happen to take place in certain segments of the community. We want to further encourage people to reach certain levels of educational attainment, to enhance their marketable skills, and to be an invaluable asset to the city of Durham. As was previously mentioned, we already have about 30 feet of the property that is within the city of Durham. However, uh, the property is about 1,100 feet long. And so in order to better enhance what we're trying to do and to bring beauty to the community, we ask for your assistance in this matter. Please also know that we have already done some things to affect the community aesthetics. We have removed quite a bit of debris that was left within the community and we have some other projects that will be complementary to the community, to the residents, and to the entire city of Durham. Thank you for hearing us. Welcome. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. My name is Samuel Mebbin. I own property next to 4512, 4516 Denfield Street, runs parallel to 4512. I'm not opposed to True Covenant building a church of worship. What my concern is, it is infested with mess. 
tires, motor parts, bottles, and has been so for over 50 years. There's running water that runs through 4512 that runs into a creek that runs behind 4512, 4516, other property that runs down into the Eno River that has been contaminated for over 50 years. My concern is who's going to clean up this water and who's going to clean up this mess? 45, the True Covenant Baptist Church has only cleaned up the front part of the property. But who's going to clean up the back end of the property? And who's going to clean the water? Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. God bless you. Thank you. I ask a lot of questions. I don't know if we go get some answers or not. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I don't have an answer this evening, but I did take a note, and we will have the uh, code inspection uh, officers from Neighborhood Improvement Services take a look at that situation uh, as quickly as possible. Thank you. Uh, Pauline Abutz, is she present? O B U N C E. Well, I didn't just, I want to make sure I call the name correct and spell it correctly. Okay. Is there anyone else who wants to speak on this item? Reverend Lick, you had a comment? Yes. Much of the information that Mr. Melvin uh, yielded is incorrect. We have paid a substantial sum to already remove quite a bit of debris. True, the true part is, I can't tell you how long that has been there, but I can tell you that we have worked in collaboration with the Army Corps of Engineers, the Water Works Department, which is out of Raleigh, the Durham City Planning Department, and with a couple of vendors within the Durham County in order to already remove some of the debris. What we find when we start construction, who knows? But the thing of the matter is, like any construction depart, uh, project, we are willing to do everything that we can to remain in compliance and to work in a collaborative effort with those persons who are over us, such as I have mentioned previously. I thank you for hearing our request. You're welcome. Is there anyone else that wants to speak on this item? This being a public hearing, uh, let the record reflect that no one else asks to speak. I'll declare the public hearing to be closed. Madam Speaker, before the council. Move the item. Second. It's been properly moved and second. Madam Clerk, will you open the vote? Will you close the vote? It passes seven to zero. So who's going to do the consistency statement? Second. It's been properly moved and second. Madam Clerk, will you open the vote? You close the vote. It passes seven to zero. Thank you. Let's move to item 19. <coughs> West Village Complex, parking lot, local historic landmark designation removal, LD 15000001. Good evening again, Mr. Mayor, members of council, Pat Young with the planning department. Uh, as the mayor indicated, this case is uh, LD 15000001. Uh, request by Brian Kane of FCP West Village Phase 1 uh, to repeal the landmark designation for 1.196 acres, so it's a small portion of the overall West Village complex designation um, uh, from the that portion of the property currently a parking lot and historically uh, part of a railroad bed uh, the 2001 designation of the remainder of the parcel uh, would remain uh, based on the uh, staff finding that there are no significant historical resources existing at this site staff recommends approval the Historic Preservation Commission at their August 4th meeting recommended approval of this item by a vote of six to zero I'll be happy to take any questions Thank you. You've heard the staff report. It's a public hearing. Recognize persons on the council that want to speak to this. this is Councilman Katati. Thank you, Mayor. Um, 
so my reading of this is that taking away landmark status means that the certif a certificate of appropriateness is no longer required for construction on the lot. Can you comment on um, the applicant's intentions and then also, as you see it, the harm in keeping the designation and the harm in removing it? Thanks. Sure. So, uh, Councilwoman Katati, the, um, you are correct. If the designation is removed, there would no longer be a requirement for a certificate of appropriateness. Uh, this is kind of right, right outside the uh, downtown historic district. The um, staff did look at this issue, um, and what we believe is because of the fact that this is located in the downtown design district, uh, support one uh, sub tier specifically, that the um, development re requirements, um, the form based code associated with that district, would provide sufficient protection uh, to result in high quality design for that site. Um, and Again, as I indicated, the, um, of course, there's significant historic uh, character with the West Village complex overall, but this portion didn't appear to, to have any, so we don't feel like there's any loss of historic character or resources. Uh, one, I'm sorry, one more piece of your question. There are not any pending applications for development on this site. There have been some preliminary conversations with the owner about potential redevelopment of the site. So I hear your reassurance on perhaps no, not particular harm in removing it, but is there any harm in keeping it? In other words, how burdensome is the certificate of appropriateness in that, for example, then they do have to go before the, um, sorry, Historic Preservation Commission, mm -hmm. and, um, and then there's a little more, I think, discussion about criteria and design and things like that. So can you comment on that? Uh, sure. So, of, of course, you're correct that there, there would not be a requirement if this action is approved tonight uh, that there be an analysis of the impact on historic resources with redevelopment of this site. Um, that is certainly uh, obviously a consideration that you all would, would want to give consideration to. What I would say is, and I said a couple times, this portion of the site has not been his, a historically significant portion of that development. And we feel like the, the traditional standard downtown design district regulations will protect the public interest in this property, but you are correct that the analysis of the impact of the plan development on uh, how it's consistent with the adjacent historic resources would, would not occur if this is approved tonight. I recognize Councilman Shule. So um, they've been getting, uh, I assume, a property tax break on this for the last 14 years, or is that right? Well, that's correct. Councilman Michelle, my, my understanding of the statute, Carla Rosenberg of our staff, who's our historic preservation expert, can speak to this if I get it wrong, but they'll have to repay the last three years, which is pursuant to state statute of, of taxes, the, the abatement they received, which totals over $13,000. I understand they'll have to repay the last three years. I read that in the letter from the uh, state historic preservation, but is that all we want them to repay? They've been getting 14 years of tax abatement, and, uh, you know, do we have any... Uh, any say in this matter? In other words, if we're going to remove this, they've been getting a tax break on this for 14 years, now they want to remove this certificate of appropriateness requirement and be able to build on it freely as they wish, having received a, a, a substantial tax break uh, for a long period of time. So what are our options? And do you have any thoughts on that? Sure, Councilman Shul. Um, I'll, I'll certainly defer to my colleagues or to the city attorney's office, but I don't believe there's any legal mechanism to require repayment uh, uh, beyond the three-year period. I think the statute's fairly clear that, um, that that's the maximum period which we can compel um, repayment. See, the, uh, the force is rising there behind you, and maybe they have <laughs> something else to add. That means I got it right or wrong. Patrick. I'll let them. <laughs> State statutes say that the maximum um, that you are able to recapture. Oh, I'm Carla Rosenberg with the Carla Rosenberg with the planning department. Um, state statutes dictate the three year is the maximum capture for the tax credits. I'm sorry, not tax credit, the tax abatement.
but this is a completely optional on our part, is it not? The the decision whether or not to remove this. That, yeah, that is correct. And is there any reason that we can't, as a as a requirement of this, uh, ask that the tax abatement be repaid in full for the full 14 years? As a condition of approval, I believe that you could. Oh, you can't. I believe that you can't, per state statute. You, you can you can ask the question, but but it, you can't require it. That's correct. I would like to ask for it. I wish we could condition the vote on it. I mean, they've been getting 14 years of of tax abatement, and I don't know why I'm looking at you, Carla. It's not <laughs> your fault. Uh, but uh, it does strike me as uh, that we ought to, if we can't require it, we ought to at least ask them to repay the 14 years of tax abatement that they've received on the basis of having this um, on this uh, the, uh, this uh, designation which they're now asking us to remove in order for them to re redevelop this profitably. And it just seems fair that they would repay the city for the uh, benefits that they've received and now are getting rid of in order to redevelop. So uh, I don't know exactly how we go about asking that, but I'd like to, uh, I'd like us to. I, I, I want to make a comment on this, and I have nothing invested in this, but I, I think we ought to look at the history of why this was given in the first place for the whole project, uh, but not for having that, we probably wouldn't have gotten West Village done the way it was done. But there was some point in time when the developers really wanted to build on this property, and they met a lot of objections from, I'm not going to say who, but I, I think we know who. Uh, and if they're allowed now to build on it, which I think their intent is, then we're going to have increased tax value that we're going to come, which is going to probably be a lot more than what we've had behind. So uh, I, I don't want to place it entirely on the developers as to why they're asking for this removal and why they only pay three, three years back. But this property could have been developed many years ago had some people not objected. And I'm not going to go through who, who the objection was, Steve. Uh, Steve Madeline with the Durham Planning Department. Just want to add one bit of clarification. Back in 2001, uh, the practice had been to include all the property with the land, uh, local landmark designation. As the council is familiar, we no longer do that. We actually do a separate evaluation to determine whether the land is worthy of the landmark designation. I think this property was just caught up in that, that prior practice. Uh, as the mayor rightfully pointed out, should a development uh, actually occur on this property, then I think you're going to probably recover more tax uh, from that development than you would leaving it in its current landmark designation. So. That's Councilwoman Katati. Yeah, just for clarification, the certificate of appropriateness or the designation does not preclude development on it, does that, it? That is correct. It does not preclude development on the site. Right. So but, really it, but if I can elaborate, uh, as uh, the mayor was kind in that he didn't necessarily talk about this, uh, this site was actually part of the West Village redevelopment project that came through uh, about a year or two ago and uh, was part of the project that went to the Historic Preservation Commission and there were some uh, potential issues identified by the Historic Preservation Commission that were not inconsistent with the design district, but did put some potential issues on the table that the developer was not able to overcome and move forward with that project. Um, I think it is reasonable to assume that that same kind of environment would exist moving forward if this were to remain in the uh, local uh, his historic landmark designation. Um, and I think what the developer is proposing is something very consistent with the property that is immediately adjacent to this uh, that they did just complete com uh, construction on uh, with the, with the uh, multifamily development. I recognize Councilwoman Kato. Yeah. Is there um, anything that would preclude us from continuing this one cycle and to have a further discussion with the applicant? I mean, it seems to me that there's nothing that's preventing us from a voluntary contribution. Um, so. Steve Madeline with the Durham Planning Department. There is nothing that precludes the council's ability to continue this item to a date specific if you so choose. And if you want to uh, direct staff to meet with the applicant and uh, explore the issue that has been raised, we would be happy to do so. Keep doing this piecemeal. But um, I understand the past concerns that were uh, on this land, but the Historic Preservation Commission did vote 6 0 to recommend that they, the council remove the landmark. That so, Presumably, 
th they, they basically recognized, as Mr. Young had indicated, there really is no historic value to a parking lot, which is what this is. Uh, and uh, obviously there were no structures in play at this point, so they felt very comfortable supporting this request. Re recognize council. Had you finished? Yeah. Recognize, <coughs> recognize council on Moffitt. So, Oh, just, just for point of clarification, I have a second thought I want to add to this, but um, didn't I see recently this, this piece of property has changed hands? Or is this not changed hands? In the not reason? to my okay. knowledge, council member. All right. So l let me just observe that if we do not remove the historic landmark designation, and if they develop the property exactly the same way that they would if we do remove it, they will pay 50% of the property taxes that they would pay if we remove it. So the question is, what do we want in the future in the way of property taxes? And uh, since they're willing to pay 100% of the property taxes, um, I would certainly be willing to consider that carefully. I'm sorry, I had, I had, I've been looking to my left I got to get more conservative and look them at the right. <laughs> All right, Dean Brown. Uh, I, I go back to the obvious that, that Diane pointed out, too, that the Historic Preservation Commission in August voted 6 0 to recommend to us as a city council that the, the landmark, historic landmark status be removed. Uh, that sends a message to me in, in this discussion, and that's why I su will support the measure. Recognize Councilman Shaw. Yeah, so I'm not, I'm in favor of removing the landmark status. I, no problem. And, and, uh, and I understand, I think Don's got a great point. My only objection is I think we ought to be asking them to pay their back taxes, that they, the, the back taxes that they have not had to pay for 14 years. It seems fair to me. And um, I understand we can't require it, but I think we ought to request it. You know what I thought you were going to talk about? <laughs> what I really thought you were going to talk about is asking them to put affordable housing in this piece. But you, none of that went by the wayside. But uh, so I'm back to where we are. They come to us for housing. We will. Well, they don't need to. <laughs> yeah. I recognize. Oh, you've got the clerk. Well, no, we still have a discussion. I recognize Councilman Davis and then the Mayor Pro Tem. Well, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I, I guess I don't want. I know you can ask people to to um, pay. I guess I don't like the whole idea of this council being in a position where it could be interpreted that we were, um, I, appearing to be saying that if you want this designation to be removed, then we want you to pay more than what the law would allow. Um, I, I don't want it to, to look like we are um, doing anything that could be perceived as um, questionable. So I'm, 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 I understand the concept, but I don't think it ought to be something that we should do. Recognize the mayor pro tem. Had you finished, Councilman Davis? Yes, yeah, Recognize the mayor pro tem. Very simply, I think it's unfair and very harsh. And as soon as we close, you close the public hearing, I would like to move the item as written. Any, any other comments before I close the public hearing? Uh, hearing no other comments from the public, anybody else in public? Nobody wanted to speak? Uh, I'll declare the public hearing to be closed. Madam Speaker, for the Move council. Move the item. Second. It's been properly moved and second. Madam Clerk, will you open the vote? You close the vote. It passes seven to zero. Thank you. Let's move to the next item, which is Supplemental item, item 26, preliminary economic development incentive agreement between the city of Durham and a proposed project Cavalier with the community development area within the city limits. Uh, 
Good evening, Mr. Mayor, uh, City Council, City Staff. Kevin Dick with the Office of Economic and Workforce Development. Uh, we provided a staff memo that um, uh, defines uh, the proposed project Cavalier, um, and we are here to answer any questions if there are any. I recognize the Mayor Pro Tem. What's up with these ties? <laughs> you guys are all wearing the picture. Breast, is breast, cancer, breast Cancer Awareness Month. Is this a convention? <laughs> oh, oh, for cancer awareness. That's okay. Man. All right. I had mine on you. Back to the item. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Can we stick with this tie discussion for a while, Mr. Mayor? <laughs> yes. Uh, are the there tie. questions <laughs> of the staff on this report? Uh, hearing none, I'm going to call for a <coughs> I'm going to move the item. I want to make a comment that um, I've been mulling. Can, can, can someone second this? Why? Second. This second. Okay. Sorry. Thank All you. Right. That um, I think that um, the incentives that we're offering per job are bargain, and that if we have a way to offer, if we have a way of offering in the future um, incentives based on employing people who live within the city limits, I would consider that be even more valuable and worth greater incentive money. But in this case, I think it's a bargain and I'm going to be voting for it. Thank you. Any other for further questions? Not called a question. Madam Clerk, will you open the vote? And close the vote. It passes 7 to 0. Uh, moved item 27, preliminary economic development incentive agreement between the city of Durham and a proposed project Iron Man within the community development area within the city limits. The staff is here to answer any questions that the council may have on this item as well. You've seen the report, you've heard the staff comments, so the questions recognize Councilman Katani. Thank you, Mayor. Um, uh, Kevin, on page two of the memo, the potential city of Durham incentives, um, I'll just read this because I'm here, proposed offers up to $430 per, per job for 150 jobs. I'm okay with that. But the um, comment on additional city of Durham assistance may include expedited approval of permits. Can you comment on that? Um, that is not something that would necessarily be in a, a contingency of the agreement. Um, it is something that's possible uh, if we have the staff resources um, to provide for expedited approval of permits just as we do um, with you know, other projects that may involve some level of, of real estate development. Uh, and that would be the case in, in this particular uh, instance. Uh, but, it does, but it's not necessarily a contingency of the agreement, it's just something that um, could be an element of assistance. And at what level would that be determined? Based upon, point? based upon um, staff capacity, based upon in order to expedite approvals, based upon um, the worthiness of the, the permit applications and so forth. Councilmember Katalik, I jump in. It, th yeah, that does do. require uh, a uh, petition to the manager's office, at which okay. time we review with staff the workloads and the conditions uh, that you know, that accompany uh, the request, and uh, then I would have the authority to uh, authorize an expedited review, but it's not automatic. Okay. Well, I appreciate that assurance. Um, I could explain my concerns a little, or I could skip that because we don't necessarily know exactly who this firm is. But um, I have an inkling, and we have other issues um, pending before the city that I have some concerns about. That's why I wanted to have a better understanding of exactly what was the intent there. Um, and I guess just to continue, um, additional City of Durham assistance may include on the job training funds and use of NC Works Career Center system for recruitment. Um, quite often we require them to use NC Works. Is there any reason why we wouldn't explicitly state that as part of the agreement? That will be, ex that will be stated explicitly, the use of NC Works. The on-the-job training grant okay. funds would not necessarily be explicit because okay. those have customer eligibility attached to them. Okay. Perhaps you can split those two. We'll, be, we'll, we'll do that in the agreement. Great. Thank yeah. you. Are there other questions? Not entertain a motion on item. 
Second. It's been properly moved and seconded. Madam Clerk, will you open the vote? Close the vote. It passes seven to zero. Thank you. We'll move back to item 11, an item that was pulled on the agenda, the proposed acquisition of former Duke Diet and Fitness Center. Um, we can do it one of two ways, Mr. Manager. We have persons of sound to speak, or you can have the staff to. I think the staff can do just a very brief uh, introduction of the, uh, the agenda item, not a presentation, and then we'll be prepared to take staff comments, I mean, uh, public's comments. Good evening, Mayor Bell and Council Members. My name is Sandy Wilbur. I'm with the Public Works Department, Stormwater Services. Uh, I, the item before you is a uh, is for the option to purchase a piece of property so that uh, for the use of a stormwater constructed wetland uh, in order to treat stormwater from several large drainage areas that include downtown Durham, um, in order to help us um, comply with the Falls Lake stage one requirements for a nutrient reduction. Okay, uh, any questions from the staff? Recognize Councilwoman Kadani. Thank you, Mayor. Was, um, Sandy, can you just talk briefly about what, if, if this is approved tonight, what the next step would be in terms of planning and design for the property? Yes, the, the next step would be to um, put out an RFP for a uh, consulting services to help us with the design and um, public outreach um, process. Right now we have uh, a feasibility study so we would get into more detailed design. Um, there's also there's a building on the property so there would be um, some demo and uh, removal of soil um, associated with that but the, uh, the consultants would get on board and then we would uh, have a formal you know, public outreach to try to determine any kind of amenities and things like that that we could uh, incorporate into the projects. Any other questions? Recognize the Mayor Pro Tem. What is the timeline for this project? Uh, the timeline, let's see, I think I've got it here a little bit here. We, if the purchase goes through, uh, we would, uh, start up a, an RFP process that takes, you know, about somewhere around six months, bring on the consultant, um, do a design and public input process. Um, there would be a permitting process that would take about probably a year or so, a year or two, and then construction itself would take probably one to two years. So it's definitely, and then, you know, then we would go to like as built and then into a maintenance phase. So um, it's quite a few years in the, in the process. I know the Upper News River Basin Board of Directors uh, is certainly waiting for some action on this. So I hope that we will not unnecessarily hold it up. Thank you. Any other comments? Recognize Councilman Brown. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I think the uh, messages we're getting from various uh, neighborhood advocates is that they want to know, um, we're talking a project here of over $8 million, correct? That's correct. What percentage, if, if any of that, would be spent on some type of recreational purpose or walkways uh, to give access to the the community? I think at this point in the design process, we haven't determined the amount um, that it would be. There's an existing trail that goes right along the property, uh, so there would be some improvements to that. And as far as the rest of the amenities, we have gotten a lot of input in the, uh, we had about 12 or 13 meetings a couple years ago. So I've gotten a lot of input on what kind of amenities people are looking at. And so we would continue that process to try to determine you know, what sort of things that we could incorporate into the project. But I don't have any costs at this point. Would, they, would there be any way uh, that monies could be used from your department for recreational community assets? Or would that have to come from Parks and Rec? 
I think that would probably depend on what uh, sort of amenities they, they were. I mean, there's certainly um, certain educational uh, kind of things that potentially could be put in there, but um, I'd have to probably look into it. It probably depends on exactly what we're, what we're looking at as far as amenities. Let me rephrase the question one more time. Again, do you see anything, and uh, perhaps your colleague there can help, that would prohibit your department from enhancing the site beyond the uses that you have uh, deemed it necessary for? We would have the ability to enhance it in some ways, yes. In some ways. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you. Recognize Councilman Shule. I appreciate Eugene's questions. And I, there's a lot of interest in the neighborhood and in the city in this being more than just a large place to store our water and slow it down. And um, we, need, we need to be able to do that, I feel. And uh, at the work session, Chris Drapps uh, from uh, Alibi Creek talked to us about that a little bit, that if we just think of it as just as a water retention facility, we're not going to be doing our community the, the favor that we need to be doing. And so I hope you all will be seriously pursuing what the possibilities are. And, and I know you've already gotten, as you said, two years ago, you, lot, you had a lot of ideas and you're going out for another public input round, which I appreciate. But I just think we all ought to be uh, as constructive as we can about making this more than simply a stormwater facility. And so I hope that you all will, uh, you know, have enthusiasm for that. Uh, I know that you're, you're in a situation where I know what your main job is, and, but I think that if you all are enthusiastic about the possibility that it be more, then the community can pitch in, and the other departments can be mobilized as necessary, and we can make something really great happen. And, and that's what I'm really hopeful. Uh, and really will be looking for is that something great happen uh, in, as addition to, in addition to it being a great stormwater facility, which I know is job one. So do you, do you have any comments on that or thoughts? I think we can make it a, an, an, you know, something that the, the city's proud of. And I think working with the neighborhood and trying to see what their needs are and, and other citizens and trying to incorporate those kind of uh, recreational and other uh, types of amenities will definitely it, it can make it sort of a destination of being able to look at you know something that cleans storm water but it has some other educational and other properties that people can enjoy so um. I can ask the mayor pro tem so you have worked into your timeline uh, the input from the neighborhood that's a that's okay yes right. well I'm just very anxious because I sit on that board and uh, they are very anxious. <laughs> that's, my, that's my only problem right now. So do what you have to do. Uh, I know it'll be a good project and serve uh, the needs of all involved. Thank you. Any other council comments before we move to the audience? If not, I want to recognize Peter Katz. Uh, Chris Dreps, Jackie McLee, McLeod, and Peter, you signed up twice, right? Uh, it, so I signed up Friday, and uh, they asked me to sign up oh, again okay. as well. All right, thank you. Go ahead. Thank you. You, you. you have three minutes. Council members, my name is Peter Katz, and I live at 402 East Trinity Avenue in the Old North Durham neighborhood. Before the Duke Diet and Fitness Center came to the forefront, I spoke to you at the conclusion of the fight about O&D Park. One of the requests that I made to you was that you think about stormwater and your approach to that project with a view toward this one. My hope was that by taking a broader, more holistic approach towards both product projects, we could have maximized the community resources created in total. 
Like a lot of people, I was disappointed when the city pulled funding for the original community center project at the Diet and Fitness Center. And I thought that if people knew the kinds of amenities that existed there, they would probably fight as hard as they did for the soccer field at O&D Park. That didn't happen. And we spent almost a mil million dollars to build the, what's been called the hydrological equivalent of a parking lot there. We basically just fixed the straight pipe that goes under it. And that's a block away and upstream from the Diet and Fitness Center. So let's not make that mistake again with respect to the community placemaking aspects of this project. In the last few years, our neighborhood has become a more desirable place, but many of you may not realize that there are still several hundred low-income households living within a two-block radius of the Diet and Fitness Center. I wish somebody would speak for them. They could have really used a community center with after-school pro programs, two indoor basketball courts in a beautiful gymnasium, a pool, office space, two kitchens, and an activities room. We talk a lot about dealing with the root causes of crime in Durham, and I think this could have gone a long way towards that. We may have given up on that vision, but the history at this location still requires us to make this property into a, a true resource, and so does its future. With all the new construction, we know there will be hundreds more people living and working nearby, and this site will be highly visible. What I want you to take away from this is that we can't afford to approach it simply as a stormwater project. Thank you. Done out of necessity. And that means amenities, site design, additional uses have to be included in the scope and the budget and integrated into the design of the project very early on. It's such a high profile site, which will be looked to later as a model. We need to be focused on doing what's necessary to make this project into the paragon of what an urban wetland project can be. Thank you very much, and in particular, Eugene and Diane, thank you for your service. You're welcome. Chris Gepps. Mayor Bell and Council, um, Mr. Bonfield and Mr. Baker, thank you for having us here, having me here. I'm Chris Dreps from the Ellery Creek Watershed Association. And I just, uh, without belaboring this too long, I just want to say, Again, that the Ellerbee Creek Watershed Association supports the purchase of this property for use as a stormwater practice. We're really excited that you're making the move to do this. It's been many years in the making, and um, we're behind you all the way on that. Um, so I certainly don't want to do anything that would belabor that move. Uh, at the same time as the owners of three and soon to be almost six acres just to the north of the property, um, and as early proponents of the idea that I think um, brought the idea to the forefront the public mind um, many years ago, um, we really want to urge the city um, to partner with our organization and with the neighborhoods uh, during the planning and design at an early stage uh, to make this project not just a stormwater project, I mean, yes, it would be easy for me to stand up here and say, great, we're doing a lot of good for Ellerby Creek, but what I know from running these kind of, doing this kind of work in the public is that most people aren't thinking about the water quality in Ellerby Creek. What they're gonna be left with is what's standing there. And what I also know is that some places have done this. They've the hardest part of doing green infrastructure right, if you ask the folks in the city of Chicago, is getting the different departments in the city to talk to each other and work from an early stage. That's the challenge. It's not building the practice. And if we do this right, we're going to have something to brag about. We're going to have something to show off to the rest of the country. We're going to have 16 or more protected natural acres at the edge of our downtown that will be Durham's nature park. And, and I want us to have that vision and use that vision. S yes, acquire the property quick. Yes, meet the Falls Lake stage one rules. But let's, let's slow down when it comes to, to thinking about what this project can be and let's do it right so that we can all look back and we as Ellerby Creek Watershed Association can not be fielding calls from people about why we put that thing out there in their neighborhood or why we were proponents of that, but rather receiving calls about what a great project that was. Can we do more of these kind of things? So thank you so much, and um, we, we love to help in any way we can. You're welcome. As 
Jackie McLeod. Good evening, Mr. Mayor and members of the council. My name is Jackie McLeod. I live in Old North Durham at 911 North Mangum Street. Last week, I sent an email to the members of the city council sharing my concerns about the purchase of the Duke Fitness Center by the city of Durham in order to turn it into a stormwater facility. I felt a lot of questions had not been answered after the last discussion in 2013, and now I felt mm, this is a foregone conclusion. I'm therefore really grateful to all of those members of the council who wrote back to me and just took the time out to do that, to educate me, and also promise that the future planning process will bring in the surrounding neighborhoods. I understand that you will invest in detailed planning process that is transparent and participatory. I hear your assurance that this will not be a stormwater facility but a recreational and educational asset too. After tonight and hearing everything you said, I feel much, much more hopeful about the future of this project. Durham's rise to a mecca for foodies, music, art, and grit was no coincidence. There were visionaries at work, and we can be adding another jewel to our crown. I look forward to us all creating something wonderful. Thank you. Welcome. I uh, don't have any doubt that this, this item is going to pass. I'm voting for it, and I suspect the comments I've heard here is, 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 is going to be supported. Uh, I, I want to make a suggestion. Uh, we, we've talked a lot about parks and rec trails, et cetera. Uh, I've suggested that we really need to have a master plan that we can put before the council and ultimately possibly put before the people because this is about money and I just don't think that we're going to accomplish what needs to be done based on the way we're moving so far. I might be proven wrong, but I think this will be a perfect candidate to include as part of the recreational facilities upgrade. And I would hope that, Mr. Manager, as, we, as your staff brings this back to us, not this item, but your plan for parks and rec, that you would include this. And again, I don't know what the bill is going to be. I'm still of the opinion that uh, to do it right and to do it uh, long term, to be visionary, to have something people can, can really touch and feel, uh, to me it's going to take a bond referendum. But we, we've got time to put that in. But I, I would just ask that this be included as a part of the facility upgrades or amenities that uh, you bring back for our consideration. Uh, we've got plenty of time. If I look at the timetable that's been talked about, we've got time to do this. And I, I just think it's the perfect candidate for, for this to be one of the items that we consider for our uh, growth in parks and recreation facilities. Ha having said that, I'm, I'm gonna, unless there's further questions, I'm going to call the question on this item. Move the item. Second. It's been properly moved and second. Madam Clerk, will you open the vote? And close the vote. It passes seven to zero. Thank you. Are there any other items to come before the council? Mr. Mayor, Recognize. members of the Joint City County Committee, there is a meeting in the morning at 9 at the county. Got it. Okay. Thanks for reminding us. Okay. Any other items to come before the council? If not, we're adjourned at 8.15 p.m.